All right, so we're gonna talk about giving students scholarships. We're gonna talk about the do's and the don'ts. Let's talk about the don'ts, the mistakes. Verbal, no verbal agreements. Absolutely, no verbal agreements, no verbal scholarships. Everything must be on paper and it must be signed and documented. It must be signed by you and signed by the student. So if you're gonna give a student a scholarship, there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to have some rules and regulations, some guidelines for that, okay? Now, we, we already have some rules and regulations in here, and then you can have them to sign and date at the end. Some of these rules and regulations, you're gonna like, some of them you're not. You're even gonna add some of your stuff to it, okay? Now, so one thing, we want to be full time. You probably want them to attend at least 30 to 40 hours per week. I would have that as one of the rules. All right. Now, also, you want them to attend mandatory Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. When I had my schools back in the day, if I gave somebody a scholarship, it was mandatory. They had to come every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Why? Because my schools were very busy. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it was just like the shop. Those were big money days. Clients was coming in. I needed those students there to do the services. All right? Now, you can put the times down. If you look at this, we have the times. You can easily put your time in here. All right? Your days. You may be open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. This is just a template, a guideline, an example for you all to implement your own stuff. Now, let them know about the hours, the verification of the hours. Now, let them know, look, you got to sign in, sign out, clock in, clock out, or you're not going to be given time. We'll go on down. Uniform, all right? Make sure you have a prescribed uniform. If you don't have a uniform, they may come in any kind of way. No flip-flops, no open toe shoes, no bonnets, all right? You, you want them to have whatever shoes you want them to have on, whatever color, if it's a black smock, if it's shorts, a skirt below the, the knees, whatever your rules and regulations are for attire. You definitely want to have something for attire because if you don't and they come in there any kind of way, you didn't even set the rules down. You want to set the rules down before they start. That's very important. Now, let them know when they have a lunch break four times part-time students, sanitary environment, they're going to have to clean up. If you're on scholarship, you're going to have to do these cleaning details, whether it's taking out the trash, sweeping up the floor, cleaning the toilets, or whatever. Because now you got this student on scholarship, you probably don't need a janitor. Of course, you're the janitor starting out, but if you got these students on scholarship, they need to help clean up. Don't let them just come in there and sit around. Really, the whole school the whole student body needs to clean up. When I had my school, first school, I would clean the toilets. i get on my knees and do the dirty work and do all that, and the students would see me doing that. See, a great leader is going to lead by example. After the students saw me doing that, guess what? Some of them say, I got the bathrooms this week, so you want to lead by example. Let them know unbecoming behavior, cussing, doing all of that or whatever, profanity. You're not going to tolerate that. You're going to have to put them out or you're going to have to call them in the office, write up a warning, document it. Look, you can't be using those words. We're not doing that here. I know you do that at home or your parents allow that or whatever, but we're not doing that in this establishment. We, we're running a great professional establishment. So you don't want no cussing and all that type of stuff. So put that down. Let them know where they need to park their car. If not, they may park right up front where the clients are. You should have a designated area where students park their car. Emergency phone calls. Let them know. They can get an emergency phone call. If it's an emergency, I understand that. Let them know about the phones. Phone is going to be on vibrate. It's not going to be on ring, and you're not going to be talking on the phone. In classroom, on the clinic floor, that's a no-no. Keep going. Let them know. You may be terminated. Look, may terminate students' enrollment for non-compliance with general policies. 
the student enrollment agreement or state laws, rules, and regulations, improper conduct, or any action which calls or could cause bodily harm, all of that, okay? Now, illegal acts. You definitely want to have this in there because if you put a student out or terminate them, this is wide open. Pretty much you can terminate them for whatever because you're leaving this wide open. All right? You're leaving a whole net. Next thing, they're responsible for their tools because this student may get a scholarship. If you give them a kit, they may not come back. I wouldn't give them a kit. Now, I would let them give me their ID. Let them give you the ID. And then when they give you the ID, guess what? Give them a kit, like a library card and checking out a book. And then let them go on the clinic floor and work. Now, the day is over with. They bring the kit back. Y'all check the kit together, make sure everything is in there. Stuff is not broken. Then you give them their ID back. You put the kit back up. Because imagine this student may not have any money. That's okay. We had a lot of students that didn't have money that I had on scholarship. I had probably four or five in the beginning. And they would come, give me that card. Here's the kit. They go out there, make money on the clinic floor. See, if you get out there and market brand and get all these clients coming in, because your biggest thing on the clinic floor, well, how am I going to get clients? Look. Do you think clients gonna be going to Rochelle, Albert C. Vaughn, uh, Charlotte, the real Rose, Courtney, Jason, Jahil, Miss Ballamy, Karen, Miss Myers, Naya, Pierre, Regina? Think about it. Rochelle, Sheila, uh, Jaquisa, Tamiga, Victoria, Vaughn. Y'all, their prices are very expensive. They're licensed professionals. Their prices are up here where they belong. Everybody can't pay those high prices. You got single parent moms high school kids, college kids, the elderly, uh, the special needs people, and people that just want a deal, you know, affordable thing, or, or even cheap people. So when you market and target them, there's a whole lot of them. Your clinic floor can be built up so much where it pays all the bills. A week and a half, my clinic floor would make so much money, all my bills was paid for my school. I wasn't worried about, well, how am I going to pay these bills? Because if you start out small and do the bare minimum, instead of trying to get this big old gigantic school coming out the gate, that's where you mess up. Start out small. And then you do your clients. Bring all your clients on the shop, charge them full price. Now, let's get back to this scholarship. Here we go. Students cannot conduct free family members. Look, you got to have that in there because they're going to be calling family members in, trying to do all of them for free. No. Now you may have a, a, a free day. Our slow day was like on a Wednesday. And I would let students work on themselves and I would let them bring one person in. They could invite one family member, friend to do their services. Now, chemical services, they had to pay for them. They had to pay for the chemical. I had a discount price for that. Keep going. Now, when a client comes in, they got to stop at the front desk. Write them a ticket and they pay first. They paying up front. All right. Whatever's on that ticket, that's what the student is going to do. If a client asks for something else, no, go back to the front desk, pay for it. Let them know. No eating or drinking. <laughs> Look, y'all going to, you, you can't let them be eating and drinking. On the clinic floor. None of that. If you don't have this in there, they're not gonna know. And the worst thing you can do as a school owner is not lay down these rules and regulations because now you don't have a leg to stand on because you didn't tell them. But if you tell them up front and you don't have to continue to read these rules and regulations, read them one time and videotape it. Let them watch the tape, then have them sign. I understand the rules and regulations, I will abide by them. Sign, date it, you sign and date it. Because students, people get amnesia. They forget real quick. They do. But you know what? Pull out that paper. You sign this on this date. And you don't have to put them out on the first one. 
bring them in the office, talk to them woman to woman, man to man. Look, we can't tolerate that. Um, this is just a warning. You can sign right here. Now, if they continue to disrespect you, you're going to have to go ahead and put them out. You're going to have to do what you got to do. And you will be putting some students out. I promise you, and I guarantee you that. If you have a school long enough, you're going to be putting some out. Everybody don't raise their kids like y'all. Some people don't have no home training. Some people are spoiled. They've been mommified to death. They've been on... Some of these boys been on their mama's breast milk too long and they babies and they have not heard the word no and they have no discipline. But I guarantee you, Jason ain't gonna tolerate that at his school. Sheila's not gonna tolerate that. Pierre's not tolerating that at his school. Albert, Charlotte, Charlotte, they're not going for that. The real Rose, you're gonna get put up out of there. Courtney's grandmama going on 100 years old. She didn't raise Courtney like that. And Courtney's not gonna tolerate that. Jessica's not going to tolerate that in her school. Karen and Lisa Shaw ain't going to tolerate that. Some people are not going to tolerate messiness in their school. And I don't think any of y'all, Ms. Myers is not going to tolerate that. Natasha, Naya, Regina, Ron is not going to tolerate that. So anytime that we have a cancer, Rochelle's not going to tolerate that. Sharonda just had to put somebody out. Yes, yeah, Sharonda's a godly woman. She's a Proverbs 31 woman. But sometimes you got to put people up. Sharon even cussed in the school. This is a church lady. Sometimes they're going to bring that out of you. And you're going to have to let these students know you're not going to tolerate that. Tamika's not going to tolerate. If you're not going to tolerate that, put a one in the chat box. I'm putting my one in here because I surely didn't tolerate that. I'm putting a bunch of ones. We're not tolerating that. Yeah, we can bring them in the classroom. Miss Bellum is not tolerating. Lisa Wilson ain't tolerating. Karen Morrison, Miss Myers, Naya's not tolerating it. B. McCall, show it. they put a bunch of ones in there. Alba's not tolerating it. Von Thurman, Regina's not. We're not going to tolerate that in the school. The worst thing you can do is let somebody come in your school and try to tell you what to do. What are they doing there at Albert? Not here? Mm -mm. That's one of the worst things you can do. So we're going to have these rules and regulations. We already got these rules and regulations here. They're already laid out for you all. You may want to take something out. You may want to add some stuff. But we're not going to tolerate that. And, if, and surely if you're going to get them a scholarship, you definitely need to be on your best behavior. One of the worst things students can do is have an attitude. You, you're really going to get put up out of there real quick because if you don't lay the foundation, and have a good, clean, Christian environment, your school is going to go to pits, and you're going to punish people that are good people. And you definitely don't want to punish them. See, because if you got somebody disrupting the class, the school, go ahead and call them in the office in private, because we all have good days and bad days, and let them know. And then ask them, do you understand? Record it with your phone when you're talking to them. Do you understand? This is being recorded. Do you understand? Yes or no? And get a yes out of them. Ain't no, like somebody, no. My mom used to say, do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because they may get amnesia. And when you get ready to put them out, Ms. Bamba always taught me this. Put them out publicly. Do not put them out privately. Why did she say put them out publicly? So all the other students can see that. Because y'all need to lay down early that you're not going to tolerate no BS. And let the other students know that. Because when they see that, they're going to let you know you mean business. And then they're going to start gossiping. And they're going to tell everybody, you know what? Sharonda's a nice young lady. But hey, if you, if you pee her off, don't do that. She's not going for that. Rochelle ain't going for that. So now we're going on down. No smoking is allowed in the school. We, we already know that because now this 2022, you, you really can't smoke in any bill. I don't know, no bill you can smoke in. Students must uh, satisfy and complete all the academic. They got to take their tests. You're on scholarship. Even, they, even if they're not on scholarship, these rules and regulations need to be laid out. 
All right. They can't be coming in late. Put your tardy rules down. Suspension can last from one to 30 days. That's the great thing about being a school owner. You have control. See, with these shops, a lot of y'all got booth rent, commission, and all of that, and y'all babysitting grown people. That's not a good job to babysit grown people. They think they run things. With a school, you run the show. So for y'all that are asking about scholarship, and you may have them the right essay. And, and I wouldn't even call it an essay because that'll scare people away. Why do you want to, why do you need a scholarship? Why do you want a scholarship? Who are you going to school for? Who are you doing this for? Why you just don't continue to work your job or what you're doing? Let them answer all of those questions. How do you feel this scholarship will help you? Who else is it going to help other than you? Is it going to help your family, your kids, or whatever? So now we have some guidelines for this scholarship. We'll stop that. Okay, now hopefully y'all have learned some stuff because somebody asked, Jason asked a question about giving a scholarship. And there's nothing wrong with giving scholarships. Oh, I'm not going to let them go free to my school. There's nothing wrong with that because think about it, y'all. Just think about that. You want to get some bodies in your school. Imagine you got five people working in your school, five students, they're not paying nothing. All right, okay, so what? What if you have a shop and you got five people working in your shop? They got booth rent or commission. Commission is 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30. Now, you got this school, you got five students in there, they're not paying anything, but you went out and built your clinic floor up. All right, you've done Facebook, Instagram ads, all of that. Now you got people coming in. These five students got to do at least 30 to 40 hours a week. They're on scholarship. You got five workers. You got five barbers, stylists, and nail techs working full time for you for free. Think about that. Can they not generate enough money to pay your bills for your school? You can't find five people to work in your shop full time for free. Nowhere on planet Earth. You can't do that. Ain't nobody gonna go work in your shop for free for a whole year, a week, or any of that. So a school is better. You have free labor. Now, so we covered that part. This is what we're gonna do. A lot of y'all ask questions. How am I gonna open this school? What should I do? What should I not do? First step. This is what you want to do. Look at your rules and regulations. Every state board has rules and regulations. All of these people out here are talking about schools and they're talking about opening schools. And guess what? A lot of them haven't even looked at the rules and regulations. And I know you haven't looked at the rules and regulations because if most of y'all had looked at the rules and regulations, you wouldn't be scared to open your school because it's not a lot. My first school was cheaper than my first shop. Now, the only difference in that shop and school, one has the potential to make millions of dollars and free up your time. The other one really doesn't have that potential. Very small. There, there, there's only a hand, small percentage of salons in the whole world that are doing big numbers and have time freedom and financial freedom for the owners. But there are a lot of accredited schools doing big numbers, freed up the school owners time, made them a lot of money. So think about the two. So let's look at the rules and regulations. And when you look at the rules and regulations, you're gonna discover it's not a lot. Today we'll go with Texas, all right? So let's look at the rules. See, there's no sense on you commenting and talking about something when you have not researched it. Don't do that. If you have not researched something, don't go commenting and talking about it because they've really put a myth in your mind that it's hard to open a school. You got to have all this money and all that. That's not true. It's not true. No, it's not. 
there's more ways to skin a cat. So let's go and talk about that. So now, let me share this screen. Very simple. This is Texas, TDL, TDLR. So let me make sure I share this screen with y'all. All right, now, every state board is different. We understand that. So don't be listening to somebody in Pennsylvania, California, Florida, New York, or whatever, because every state board is different. Texas is TDLR. They have different rules and regulations. All right. Well, how am I going to find my rules and regulations? Just Google it. Google it. If you don't have the rules and regulations, send a, a DM me or a message me at bar at gmail.com and a team member will send you the link for your state. Y'all can Google though. Cosmetology board in whatever state you're in. Barber board in whatever state you're in. And it'll pop up. If it doesn't pop up, send us an email. Now this is Texas. It has all the rules, regulations, everything on here, the application for open a school, everything is on here, all of that, okay? After you've looked on here and you've researched it, if you can't find something on here, guess what? It's got a contact, call them. If you want a quicker response from any state board, email them, they'll respond. If you email them, they will respond. Well, I can't find the, the rules and regulations. Well, I can't find an application. They'll tell you exactly where it's at. Or email me and that Barbara. All right. Now, I'm not going to go through all these rules and regulations and everything, but it's on here. Let's now that you got that, that's going to let you know what you need, what you don't need. So here. Texas Barber Laws. I'm just doing like a little shortcut. Now, the thing about it, um, they've changed the rules and regulations. They've updated them. And on Texas, now, guess what? There's no minimum square footage, okay? There's no minimum chairs. What else in Texas? You don't have to have an instructor's license. If you got a barber license, cosmetology license, nail license, aesthetics license, you can teach in the school. That's in Texas. That's why it's very important to read your rules and regulations. If you're in Tennessee, no, you gotta have an instructor's license. Pennsylvania, teacher's license. New York, teacher's license. So it's very important that you read your rules and regulations. Well, I'm in Georgia, cosmetology, we got to have 3,000 square feet and, and two bathrooms. Okay, you're in Georgia. We're talking about Texas today. So every state board has different rules and regulations. And if you look at those rules and regulations, you're going to find, you're going to discover it's not a lot. If you can open up a shop, you can open up a school. It's a little bit more paperwork with the school, but we have all of that for you. All right, next step. We've looked at the rules and regulations. Great. Okay, now what are we gonna do? As you looked at the rules and regulations, next thing you wanna do, you wanna look at the, uh, the application. Can you all see this application? Now, with the application, whether it's barber, Cosmo, nails, or whatever, you just pull that application down. I'm, I'm pull, I just pull a barber down just so you all can see that. Can everybody see this? Now, on this application, all you got to do is read it. It may be some things that you all don't know, but we'll explain it to you. I mean, very simple. Name of school. Do you know your name of the school? School application, license type. Organization type, are you an LLC, INC, S Corp? Very simple. Do you know your mailing address? You, once you find your building, sign your lease, it's gonna be an address on that lease. That's what they're talking about right here. 
the physical address. Okay. Now, owner's information. Do you know your name, your personal name, your government name? Next thing, anticipated opening date and hours of operation. Are you going to be open Tuesday through Saturday, Tuesday through Friday from nine to four, and then Saturdays eight to five? Put your hours of operation in. You can be open whatever days you want. You can be open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from nine to five. If that's what you want. Put that on your application. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you may be working in your shop making money or whatever. I don't know. It's very simple. Curriculum, yeah, I know you probably don't have a curriculum, but guess what? We have a curriculum for you. I know you probably don't have that curriculum. Some things you won't have, but we have them. A lot of things you may not have, but we have it. Keep going. All right, requirements. In Texas, how much is the application fee? It tells you right there. Don't talk to somebody in New York. You may talk to Karen in New York who's opening the school and she's going to tell you it's $5,000 in New York. And, and Karen is 100% correct. California is $5,000. Each state is different. That's why we got to read our rules and regulations. It's very important you read your rules and regulations because you're going to hear a lot of gossip out there. You're going to hear a lot of people talking about you and saying this and saying that have the paperwork to back it up. That's why whenever I go live, my YouTube videos, I got the documentation because I don't care what they tell y'all out there. I don't care what they break down to y'all. They can't show you the documents. Documentation beats conversation. We got the, okay, a floor plan. If you need a floor plan, just walk in your school and do scribble, scrabble, chicken scratch. Take a picture of it with your phone, email it to us. If you're in the program, guess what? Just like Alex opened in Texas, our team will drive the floor plan for you based on that chicken scratch. Because you got to submit that to the board. All right? Well, I don't know how to do a floor plan. Look, walk in your school. If it's a bathroom back there on the right-hand side, you write bathroom in a little circle. If you got 10 chairs over there on the left, write 10 X's and say chairs. If you got two sinks on the right, put two S's and sinks, and then our team, guess what they'll do? They'll draw the floor plan out for you, send it back to you professionally. That's simple. Okay, now, we're going with the rules and regulations. Financials, you gotta get an account to do that. Oh, well, I don't know if I an accountant. Okay, that's what we're here for. We'll refer you to one in Texas that'll give you a good price to do these financials. They're projected financials. Well, I'm broke. So what? Doesn't matter. I'm overcoming the cash flow problem. It does not, not matter. These are projected financials. Hey, when I was in my school, I was broke. Every excuse you can make, okay? Pretty much broke, convicted felon, bad credit, no credit, on federal parole, living at a federal halfway house. What, what other excuse can y'all have? None of y'all had more excuses than me when I opened my school. Nobody. So there are no excuses. But I had Ms. Velma to do all this paperwork like what we're doing. Well, I don't know how to do this. That's what we're here for. I don't know what to do. Join the program. That's what you do. Unless you can do all this yourself. If you want to make a bunch of mistakes. Okay. Here it is right here. All right. Well, I don't care if you're dumber than a box of rocks or you lazy as all get out or if you don't have time. I understand that. Okay. Well, guess what? Name of school. What's your name of your school? All right. It's B. McCall. Okay. Guess what? B. M. C. C. A. L. L. Barber Academy. Simple as that. Our gold members, when we do all the work for you, we'll do all the work for you. We'll handicap you. In the gold program, you can be a quadriplegic. You can be a quadriplegic because the team will do all this for you. Fill out your application. Do all of this. Uh, private post-secondary. 
they'll click that box and put the X in there. They'll fill out the whole thing. All right, your mailing address. You give us the address. Where the school is at? Guess what? 2378 B Street or whatever. Real simple. Fill out this application. All right, all of this is pretty much self-explanatory. If you can read, look. Well, I'm not going to be open on Sunday. Okay, if, you, if you're not going to be open on Sunday, then what should you do? Write clothes. That simple. Well, Monday will be open from 9 to 5. Okay, 9 a.m. to uh, 5 p.m. Well, I'm going to have a night class, and it's over at 10 o'clock at night. Okay, well, 9 a.m. to 10, 10 p.m. See how simple that is? Okay, well, on information, last name, well, I don't know my name. Ask your wife, because a lot of men don't know nothing. Ask your wife, ask a woman. Keep going. Your social, or EIN, if you're LLC. Very simple, y'all. Y'all making this harder than what it is. Okay, curriculum, what you gonna teach? Well, I'm only gonna teach barbering. Okay, if you're only gonna teach barbering, just check that box. Well, I'm gonna teach barbering a thousand hours of, and then the class A and then the crossover. Okay, check those. Well, I don't see cosmetology on here. This is not a cosmetology application. I told you I was doing barbering. All right, keep going. Now, look, attach the curriculum. Well, I don't have a curriculum. I know you don't. Look, we already have the curriculum. The curriculum's already done for you. I don't care if it's barber, Cosmo, nails, aesthetics, uh, lashes. We already have all the curriculums for you. Ain't no sense of you trying to figure this out, add up all the hours. It's already done for you. You have no excuse. All right, come on down here. School has adequate space. Check all these. You got the curriculum. You're going to be teaching. One of y'all can teach 25 students. And let's talk about that. One of you all can teach 25 students. Just say you're running your small school. All right. You got all your clients from the shop. You doing them. You teach in class one hour a day, theory, what's required, and you have the students. One of y'all can handle 25 students. One of y'all can handle 15. One of y'all can handle 20. You don't need all these other instructors starting out because you're probably not going to have those students. So you're running this, you're running this 25 chair, 20 chair shop, and you're the only one getting paid. That's the mindset you want to have with this school. Then you get accredited. Boom. After three years, you're accredited. Now you're charging 20,000 students and you can do 25 with one instructor. 25 students times $20,000. That's $500,000 that you brought in just by yourself, a half a mil in tuition. We ain't talking about clinic floor money. We're not talking about product sales, kit sales. We ain't talking about um, the soda sales, the snack sales. You brought in a half million and you ain't touch no heads. That means your hands not tired, your shoulder ain't tired. Hairstyles, well, I did six figures. Yeah, you probably did six figures as a barber stylist, but I bet you tired. I bet you neglected your wife, your kids. I bet you slaved in that shop. I bet you stood up for uh, hours and hours a day doing this and all that. I know you tired, but with the school, guess what? You ain't touch no heads. All you ran was your mouth. You just talked. Now, you get you another student. Well, you just, just say you did like me. I worked a morning class and night class. Get you 25 students at night. Now you got one mil. Million dollars. But I got bills. Yeah, your rent, your light bill, your water bill, your phone bill, your insurance, taxes, gas bill. That's not a lot. So do you, do you see the potential? See, when I had that little bitty school in the hood, started out with zero, I started doing over a million dollars a year in a raggedy school. And I have the numbers to show y'all. That little raggedy school. But I started out with zero students. Zero. And everybody's laughing. 
It doesn't matter how you start out. What matters is how you finish. All right, send your pitch in. You go through all these, okay, leave an absence policy. It doesn't matter, leave an absence policy. We have all of that stuff. Withdrawal terminal, all of that stuff is in there. Everything, all these, don't, don't let all this stuff scare you. It's very simple. School will maintain a cancellation and settlement policy that provides a full refund. We have that for you. All that's already done, y'all. We have all this stuff done for you. Everything is done. The refund policy calculation, y'all don't have to know about all that. It's already done. Then you sign it and date it. And then you submit your supporting documents that we have. It has a checklist. There are no secrets. There are no secrets. They're going to come in with the checklist. Why are you going to be scared? Most of my students, every time they get an inspection, they'll be calling, oh, Chen, I'm scared. I didn't sleep the night before. Look, you're going to be OK. We give you all the documents. Look, if you run into a snag or whatever, just call me. I'm going to answer the phone. I'm going to be here for you that day. Just call me. Look, the checklist is self-explanatory. Fire extinguisher. Look, go down to Walmart or Home Depot and get your fire extinguisher. There, there, there's no... Look, it ain't no um, surprises. There's no surprises. Look, probably display printed signs inside each wall note in barber school students. If you don't have that sign, we'll send you that sign. Simple as that. We have all the rules and regulations. Access to permanent restrooms. You got to have a restroom in your school. It tells you that. No, you don't have to have a water fountain. You can go get you one of them water jugs. You know, the, the little dispensary things. You don't have to have a water fountain that's plugged into the wall like we did in elementary school. Appropriate chairs. You can have your chairs and stations. If you're in Texas, there's no minimum or maximum. In other states, there are a minimum. If they say a minimum of 10 chairs or 20 chairs in your state, what do you do? You get 10 chairs or 20 chairs, do the bare minimum. If it tell you you need five shampoo bowls, what do you do? Get five shampoo bowls. Look, it tells you here, two mannequins, one long hair and one short hair. Okay, go get you two mannequins, one with long hair, one with short hair. I mean, if, if you're not understanding that, I mean, take a little chill pill, 30 second break. Okay, we back. It says the two mannequins. Simple as that. Here go the mannequin, right here. Short hair mannequin. That's what this is. Now, what did it say next, y'all? It said a long hair mannequin. All right. If they want a long hair mannequin, Albert, B. McCall, Vaughn, Kelly, Charlotte, the real Rose. Miss Woods, Jason, Jill, Miss Bellamy, Karen Morrison, Kenny, Lucretia, Lisa, Miss Myers, Natasha, Naya, Paris, Tran, Pierre, Regina, Ron, Rochelle, Sadie, the Queen, Tamika, Victoria, Vaughn, Jasmine, Courtney. What do y'all do? You get a long hair mannequin. I'll show y'all a long hair mannequin. This is a, a long hair mannequin. Okay. If y'all don't have a mannequin, get one of your friends and be like this. While state boys there, tell them don't move until state boy leaves and tell them to hold their breath. Very simple. A clock. I'm not going to go through all of this because I'll bore you all and all of that. But I just want y'all to understand, y'all are making this more difficult than what it is. 
some of y'all scared. It's not a lot. And we have everything. We work with y'all in the program. It's not like we're abandoning y'all. It's not like we don't have the paperwork or whatever. We, we, we make it simple for you all. You all see all the other people out there who've opened their schools. I mean, think about it. And one hooded drive. So what you do? Go buy one hooded drive. A bulletin board, what do you do? Get a bulletin board. A chalkboard, what do you do? Or a dry erase board, simple as that. Get exactly what they said. Yeah, you, you, you get exactly what they said. A dry erase board or whatever, right here. Now, I don't recommend getting one this size for your classroom. I recommend getting a bigger one, but don't just go out and get a board this size, but do exactly what this says do. Follow the rules and regulations. Very simple. Now that we've got that, we hadn't even opened our school. We ain't done none of that. And I tell everybody, read the rules and regulations first, because by the time you read your rules and regulations and you look at that for your state, that lets you know right then and there that you all need us. Now, if you can do all this yourself, that's fine. If you already got all this stuff typed up and do all that, more power to you. If you got the correct wording, the verbiage and all that, good. But if you don't, you may want to join a starter program. Starter program, it'll help get you open. That's not going to help you through accreditation and all of that type of stuff, but you at least minimum probably want to start a program. But if you plan on going through accreditation, NACAS and doing all that, you're going to need the bronze or gold. Simple as that. You're definitely going to need that at, at, at a minimum. So now we've done this. Next step. And we'll go ahead and stop this for our next training.